to Don't Call Me Skinny, episode 18 here with Coach Sarah J. How's it going? I hope everybody is having themselves a good day. It is a hump day, obviously, on Wednesday, so I hope you guys are all having a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day today. I know I am for sure. The weather in Michigan is finally not being so shitty. <laughs> Like, finally. Um, so I'm excited about that. So that puts me in a good fucking mood, right? Get some vitamin D, get on those walks, guys. So that being said, um, today we're going to talk a lot about uh, things that we believe about ourselves. And what I call these are limiting beliefs. So we're just going to jump right into this today. And I'm going gonna, I'm going to define a limiting belief maybe differently than you've ever heard it before. But I'm going to define it as a thing or things that stop or prevent you from believing that you're able or capable to achieve what the fuck you want. Well, that's like a loaded fucking definition, right? So these are things that we actually believe about ourselves to be true that prevent us from doing what we actually want to do because, well, that's just easier to do, right? It's a lot easier to say that I can't do those things than it is to attempt to do those things and then fucking fail and fall on your face. And maybe it was like the worst fucking idea ever, right? And so it was like, oh, it's, it's just easier to just say, I can't do it. I don't believe in it. I'm not going to be good at it. Then it actually is to just do it and see what the fuck happens, right? This podcast is a fucking great example of a limiting belief. I did not think I was capable of doing this. I didn't think I deserved it. I didn't think I would be like able to even do it. I didn't think that people would listen to it or like it. And these are all things that I believed about this to be true, even though maybe that it, maybe some people don't want to fucking listen to it. That's cool. They're, they're lost, not mine, right? But that was not my belief. It was like nobody will listen. Not one person is ever going to fucking listen, right? And it took not just my husband, but my very good friend, Pat, who helps me do this, something to say, you're fucking crazy that people don't want to hear what you have to say. Like you tell things like it is and you're a no bullshit person and people appreciate that and they like that. And you tell the truth as is like, there's no sugarcoating anything, but there's also this element of wanting to educate and wanting people to learn for understanding. It's like people enjoy those things. I didn't think so. Right. I just thought that I wasn't capable, wasn't able, didn't want to, like people didn't want to hear me do this. And so I was just like, I don't want to do it. Like, it, I think people are, you know, just not going to like it or something. Who knows, right? That was, that's one limiting area in my life that I just thought that I wasn't capable of doing it, right? Had I not had a couple of people pushing me in the direction that I needed to go, I wouldn't have done it. Like this would not be happening, right? Sometimes it's okay to get that little bit of a push. Other times it's okay to kind of live in that really kind of, I don't want to say dark place, but a little bit of a dark place where you really doubt yourself and then you overcome that, that element sometimes on your own. Sometimes again, when you have friends or family that love you, that know that you are capable of those things, they push you to do better and be better, right? And I could say things that say the same shit about being a trainer, I never four years ago, five years ago, when I started my health journey, thought that I would be sitting here doing a fucking podcast about training and nutrition and whatever else. Never, right? Because who would want to take advice from me? Well, it started to happen where a lot of people wanted to take advice from me. Hey, how do you do this? Hey, how do you got that? Hey, where did you learn how to do this? Hey, do you know how to X, Y, Z? I was like, oh, maybe, you know, I'm onto something here. Maybe people do want my advice or whatever. And that's when I started to explore that opportunity of becoming a personal trainer, right? So now I have this same limiting belief, right? Now I have a business and now I'm trying to grow my business and not necessarily, you know, for the money element, but man, is it a good fucking feeling when you get a text after you've helped a client about, man, I don't know what I would do. I know I would have quit if it wasn't for you. That, that, ooh, that feels so good. That makes me believe that what I am doing is the right thing, that I'm in the right place. But growing a business is scary and it's hard. It's so much work. And in order to do those things, sometimes you have these moments that are like, 
oh, by the way, this is going to get really scary and uncomfortable for a second, right? You probably can relate on your own health journey. Maybe there's that way with a relationship you've had or a job that you've had. But the bottom line is these beliefs will literally paralyze you at times. They will prevent you from doing anything or making you feel like you don't deserve what you want. And it's really about trying to overcome these beliefs to make sure that are we really driving in the direction that we want to go or do we need to fucking make a left turn and flip a bitch, as they say, like out in Arizona and and go a different direction. And that's kind of why I say like living in those scary kind of moments are kind of good because it does help you either solidify, yeah, this is what I want to be doing or no, this isn't what I want to be doing. And a lot of times I call this little area that we live in resistance, right? We're feeling resistance around these things. I felt resistance in starting a podcast because I was scared to do it. A lot of a lot of people that come to me, they feel resistance in hiring me because nothing else has worked for them ever before in their life. And why would this work, right? And so we live in these little places of resistance. And typically, those are the places you want to really be leaning in on. Those are kind of the areas that you really want to be exploring to see, is something here? is this a place that I need to be? Do I need to grow from this? Or do I need to, you know, flip a bitch and change the direction, right? So we're going to talk about what limiting beliefs are, how, how it's involved in our mindset, and then maybe some tips and tricks on how to push through or break through these barriers that we deal with on the daily, right? So the limiting belief starts in our mind, in our brain, right? And your mindset's built from subconscious beliefs about you, the world around you, right? A lot of times our experiences are what shape these beliefs. So focusing on your mindset helps with your ability to be able to cope with the daily challenges, helps you to gain skills, to be successful. And so it's just it's just kind of our what our experiences are have kind of ingrained in what we what we do on the daily. So by understanding your mindset, you allow yourself kind of a deeper understanding of what's going down in that maybe great area of the subconscious um, and what your limiting beliefs are. In turn, that kind of allows you to become a little bit more you know, of your most successful and positive self. So working on these things and understanding that subconscious gray area in turn allows you to just kind of either, again, we either go continue that direction or we kind of flip that bitch and go the opposite direction, right? Because you're at that point, you're able to kind of say, yeah, that's something or no, that's not something like I'm not smart enough or good enough, but actually, maybe I am smart enough and good enough, right? And then you work on overcoming them and then shifting them. So the first thing that you have to be able to do is identify, is this a limiting belief? Am I holding myself back, right? You have to recognize things that that could be limiting you from growing or change, right? So one thing that you could do here is to write down all the thoughts that you have about the things that you want to do or the places you want to grow in your life, okay? Okay write them down and list all of the things that you can do. And then I want you to make a list of all the things that you don't think that you can do that are holding you back. So for instance, right, if you're like, okay, I'm going to go on this weight loss journey. What can I do? Well, I can watch my portions. I can go on a walk, right? I can get a membership to the gym. Uh, and then things that hold you back might be like, I'm too busy to go to the gym. I don't want to meal plan. I don't have time. Okay. Those are kind of the things that you would be holding you back. So the next thing after this we have to do is take a look at those beliefs. So now that you've written down these beliefs, you can see like, what are you actually telling you yourself that you can't do, don't have time to do, or are afraid to do? And then I want you to ask three questions about each belief. One is, is this belief serving me in any way or is it simply serving me to sit in my comfort zone? You will hear me over and over again talk about growth does not happen in a place of comfort. It never does. That resistance element that I was talking about at the very beginning of this is all about living in that comfort zone or not. And shit gets really scary when we get uncomfortable. Okay, so that's the first question. Is the belief serving me in any way or is it simply serving me to stay here where I feel cozy, comfy, on the couch, under my blanket? Okay, the second thing, what can I change this belief to or how can I turn this belief into a motivator? 
Okay. So maybe this belief is I don't deserve this. Okay. Well, how do we flip that into something that you actually do want? Like not, not do deserve because we all deserve what we want. Right. But I don't deserve this. So how do we flip that? Maybe it's not necessarily like, oh, I don't deserve to be healthy. It's like, I'm not good enough. And so now it's like, okay, but I actually do deserve this. I deserve to be happy. I deserve to feel good. It doesn't even have to be the health element, right? I deserve to feel good. I deserve to feel confident. And then the third one is, is there actually any evidence that supports this belief? Or am I just making excuses to leave, to to kind of sit in this uncomfortable place? So do you actually not deserve it? And if you do not deserve it, what is the evidence that states that you don't deserve this? Step three is we have to remove these by seeing the positivity in yourself. Now, you're going to come at me like, oh, this isn't going to happen overnight. You're right. Limiting beliefs aren't broken in like a day. Okay. Just like weight isn't lost in a day or a month. These things take time. Okay. So the way we kind of begin to remove these beliefs is in order to develop a strong and healthy mindset, we have to first have a healthy, positive self image, which a lot of women struggle with. A lot of women, we look at all the flaws in ourselves. We don't take into any consideration the fact that we are deserving of things that we, um, we do deserve to be happy, to be confident, um, that we are, you know, able to be loved. We are hundred percent. Right. So again, this isn't something that's going to come quickly. It takes work. It involves changing how you see and think and feel about yourself by getting rid of these limiting beliefs and adding in these positive affirmations. It's also showing up show up. We talk about this in the health journey. This is not any different. Start fucking showing up as who you want to be, not who, who you think you are. Who are you wanting to be? You want to be confident? Show up as confident. Okay. We can start doing this by writing down all the negative thoughts that come throughout our day. And maybe you don't have time. You're like, I don't have time to write all this shit down. I don't even have time to do whatever. Like now I'm supposed to be writing extra shit down. Cool. Make a note in your fucking phone, record it on your voice recorder. Start listening to the things you're actually saying to yourself. Then at some point in time, you can go back. And then on the side of the negative thought, on the exact opposite side of that page, you're going to write the exact opposite thought. I'm a piece of shit. I am fucking awesome. Okay. That positive side is going to start becoming those positive affirmations that we need to be retraining ourselves to get this positive self image of ourselves. Okay. I know there's a lot of steps there, right? So the first thing that you really need to do is start to create your desired self, right? Maybe you're really unsure of like, who do I really want to be? Who do I want to show up as? Like, I don't even know when you say show up as the person you want to be. I don't even know who the fuck I want to be anymore. Or maybe you're like a mom who's so fucking far gone in lost in momville that you're like, I don't even know who I want to be. I don't even know who I am. I don't, I don't have any grasp of this. Go. Okay. So, To do this, you might have to start asking yourself, what characteristics do you want to have? What do you want to look like when you've reached these goals? And who are you without these beliefs holding you back, right? So I'll say that again. Who do you want to be? Like, what kind of characteristics do you want to have? What do you want to look like when you reach these goals or the success? And Who are you without these beliefs holding you back? Are you visualizing somebody? If you're listening to this right now, are you thinking that you might be somebody? Are you picturing yourself or imaging yourself as somebody in your brain? I know I kind of do that. Okay. So after this, you're going to have to start thinking about how am I going to actually get to that place once you kind of have an image or desired person that you really want to be, right? So write down how you want to change, what what exactly your success will look like, and what during this time could hold you back. So maybe your journey is a weight loss journey, and you really think that the person on the other side of that is just somebody that can walk into a room that's confident wearing a bomb-ass dress with hot-ass heels, and you're like, fuck yeah, that's going to be me, right? So write down what what would have to happen in order for that change to take place, what is that success going to look like? And even on that journey, getting to that, you know, into those bomb ass heels, 
What is going to potentially hold you back? And then there's three different characteristics as this desired self starts to form. The first one is characteristics I want, goals that I have, and who I show up as, okay? So you're going to write down those types of things, write down. Again, it doesn't have to be writing. Maybe you're like, I fucking hate writing. Put it in a fucking, we all have a phone attached to our body. Okay. Put it in a phone, write down some characteristics that you want. You want to be loving and kind. Do you want to be appreciated and appreciative? Okay. Maybe you put down some goals that you have. Well, in order to get into some hot ass heels, what is something that you're going to have to do? Be in that bomb ass mini skirt that you're going to have, right? What is, what are those things going to have to do? You're going to have to make commitments to yourself. That's scary. Huh? right? And then who are you going to show up as? Are you going to be this like person who cowers when they walk in the room? Or are you going to put your fucking shoulders up and boobies out? And you're gonna be like, yep, I'm a bomb ass bitch. That's me, right? Who are you going to do? Which one are you going to pick? Okay. Something that I did is uh, when I was going through this journey, I actually put down, started putting down um, positive affirmations on my mirror in the bathroom right? So maybe um, some specific things that I was working on was I grew up with portion control, didn't have a lot of it, was trying to learn it, sucked, sucked at it. But somebody had said something and I don't even honestly remember where I heard it from, but it was like, if you want more, eat it tomorrow. And so I put this affirmation on my mirror because every day I was able to wake up and see that food does not control me. And unless I'm in some tiny little fucking you know, villa in Paris or some shit like that, where I'm eating like delicious crepes that I'll never probably eat again in my life. I have access basically to everything that I want. And I don't need to eat an entire thing of Ed and Jerry's. I just don't. I can have a serving of it and put it in the freezer and there will be the more for there. There will be more there for me to eat tomorrow. I don't have to eat the whole fucking thing. It just doesn't have to be that way, right? So that being said, same concept. Maybe you're struggling with the fact that you don't deserve the time to go work out. Maybe that's your limiting belief or you can't find the time, right? So maybe on your mirror, you could put like, I deserve this. I deserve to be healthy. I deserve that. Everybody deserves that. I don't know where the fuck we got in our heads that people don't deserve to be healthy and confident and loved and appreciated and all these fucking things that I feel like a lot of people don't think they deserve. I just, I don't know where that came from. I don't know why it exists. I don't know why I felt that way. Well, that's not entirely true. <laughs> I had a really shitty fucking marriage, my first marriage. But, but that being said, maybe you did too. Maybe you've had a really shitty ass relationship that made you feel like you didn't deserve that. And you do. You absolutely, I'm, I'm here to tell you right now, you fucking deserve it. So maybe that's your positive affirmation. Maybe you want to. Maybe you want to go on a walk every day. So put that on your mirror, or on a list, or on a sticky note, or on something that you're gonna see every fucking day. You deserve to go on a walk. You deserve fresh air. I want to go on a walk today. And you just say that over and over. I'm going on a walk today. I'm going on a walk today, over and over and over again. And these things start to become reality versus these things are limiting beliefs that are just kind of what our experiences really have formed our beliefs, right? That's why we believe what we do. And sometimes those beliefs hold us back from those things that we are really trying to go after, that we really want to achieve, and they don't need to hold us back. Yeah, you might live in that moment for a little bit, but you got to break through that fucking wall or you need to fucking turn around, shift and go the other way. Okay, so there's a lot here. You might want to go back and re-listen to that. But just remember that every day is a new day to do better, be better and begin again. <laughs>